Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 2 of my FTC basic programming tutorial for the 2016-2017 season. Today we'll be looking at our first piece of actual code, and we're going to make what is called a hardware class. A hardware class is essentially a file that tells your program what components your robot is made up of so that your program knows how to properly uh, command your robot. So, how are we going to do this? First of all, have your Android Studio open. Uh, go over to your team code folder on the left here, down to Java, and then under org.firstaspires.ftc.teamcode, so the same folder with your readme file, we're gonna, use, we're gonna leave that there as reference. You're going to right click on that folder and hit new Java class. Name this class hardware, and then the name of uh, whatever your robot's name is, or anything you want to do, basically, that's unique. Um, in our case, our robot's name is SpookyBot, so we call it Hardware Spooky. But I'm just going to call this Hardware Test. And hit OK, or Hardware, hardware Tutorial, there we go. Hit OK there. All right, so. What now? You can go ahead and open up these brackets where it says public class hardware tutorial. And then you're going to want to declare um, your motors. So depending on how many motors you're going to have, uh, we'll do this whatever amount of times it takes. Um, in our case, for the tutorial, we're going to have a left motor and a right motor. So how do we do this? Type in public. DC motor, and it should come up down here as com.calcom robot.hardware. And then the name of the motor, so we'll name it left motor and set that equal to null, N U L L. Whoa, what did we just do? So we are basically creating the motor in our robot class. So a DC motor is essentially the kind of object that a motor is considered to be in a program. So all motors are going to be referred as DC motors in your code. Uh, public just makes sure that um, your programs have access to this left motor. And since our robot still isn't activated at this point, we just um, set the left motor to nothing. So now you can go ahead and copy this for as many motors as you have. In this case, we only have two. So we'll make a DC motor left motor and a DC motor right motor. Next, we have to declare a hardware map. Hardware map. And this is essentially uh, a map of all your robot's components. And we're going to set that to null. Um, we can call this map. There we go. Uh, so once you have your DC motors and then your hardware map set up and declared, we can write the function that our robot will use during its initialization. So when we uh, turn it on, we'll do public void init. And then in here, we're going to do hardware map map. Actually, that's a bad example. We'll do hardware map uh, a map. There we go. So this function is going to run when our robot turns on, and it'll take an input of a hardware map that um, we will supply through our program, and then the robot will set this map. So a map, and no, map equals a map. So the hardware map that will be found during initialization is going to be set up here. So this uh, hardware map, the map of the robot that we initially pointed to nothing, we made it nothing, we are now setting that to the actual hardware map that we input. And now we're going to want to do uh, our motor initializations. So we'll do left motor equals map dot dc motor dot get and then we're going to put the name of that motor that we specify in our configuration on our phones. So 
I don't know if I'll be able to show off um, on here how to set up your configuration. I'll probably do a separate video on that. Let's say you do know how to configure your robot and have named your left motor left underscore drive. I'll change that to just left underscore motor to make things simpler. And then do the same thing for your right motor. So ensure that in your configuration file, your motors are named as left underscore motor and right underscore motor. What's next? Well, you can do one of two things. If you are using encoders on your robot motors, um, make sure to do this. For each of your motors, so we'll do left motor dot set mode and then we'll do run mode dot stop and reset encoder. So this makes sure that once your robot is turned on, all encoders are reset. If you have encoders, this is probably a really good idea. Now for the next part, we're going to want to add a little something to the beginning of our program. We're going to do a private run mode initial mode equals null. And then under our hardware map, we are going to do what is called a constructor. All you have to do is write public and then your class name, which is hardware tutorial in this case. And then we want to pass a run mode and we'll call that um, entered mode. All right, then we will set initial mode to entered mode. The reason we're putting private up here is because um, only our robot will use this variable right here. And then what we'll do is we'll go down here and then after these uh, stop and reset encoder functions we're going to do for all robots left motor dot set mode oh, I apologize my phone is buzzing and we'll set these to initial mode for both your right motor and your left motor all right I spelled it wrong there we go so this will basically set your uh, motor modes to um, to a stop and a reset mode. It's going to make sure that your encoders get reset. All right. And then down here, after that reset is done, it will set your left and right motors to whatever mode that you choose in your program. And there are modes that include uh, run with encoders, run without encoders, and run to position. And the next thing to do is set the default directions of your motors. So we're going to set the set the direction to forward for our left motor. And let's say our right motor is backwards. Actually, we'll flip these. We'll make our left motor go backwards and our right motor go forward. So what will this do? Well, if we give our left motor a power of one, it'll go backwards. If we give our right motor a power of one, it'll go forwards. So it's just that simple. This will set the default directions of your motors so that they know where to go when their power is full. All right, at the end, what we're gonna wanna do is left motor dot set power zero and for our right motor we will also set power to zero this will make sure that when our robot initializes it's not moving both motors get turned off and that is it for our hardware class uh, there's a little optional thing you can do 
if you wish to um, be able to stop your robot more easily, we'll do a public void stop robot. And we'll essentially copy these two down here. And then over here, we can use that shortcut stop robot. And then in your programs, you can also use that stop robot function. What void means is it is a function that simply uh, does stuff, it executes the code within it, and nothing else. So, um, a little breakdown. Hardware tutorial, that is the name of the class. This is the reference for your robot. This maps out everything. It lets your program know what components your robot has built in. We have a right motor, a left motor um, on the robot. So these are our components up here. We, we set an initial run mode um, so that the user can change the mode before the robot even starts. Our hardware map is a built-in internal map um, of our robot's peripherals. And this is where we start our robot. This is where we create the robot in our program. When our robot is created in our program, we give it a, a run mode and that sets this in initial run mode to that input that we put in there. When our robot starts, it takes the hardware map that we input into it and sets its internal map to that. And then with that map, we can get the components with the names left motor and right motor in our DC motor controller and set them to these variables, left motor, right motor. If we have encoders, we make sure that we stop and reset the encoders in our left motor and right motor. For all robots, we set the modes of our motors to whatever mode we pass in. And then we set the direction of our left and right motors to their default positions. So if you have a motor mounted backwards, and set that to reverse. And then we have a really quick function called uh, stop robot. That's it for this tutorial. In the next episode, we'll be writing a very basic autonomous program that utilizes this new hardware tutorial class. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.